This revolves around the Mellotron. This, this first moment, 1968, you were yeah. the only person that could play it, and the producer of Space Oddity knew that you were the only one that could play it. There, there were a few people who could play it, but they were machines that were very difficult to keep in tune. And I'd found a crafty way of keeping it in tune, so I got booked for the session. And that's the first... Well, it's also the first time I met David, but that's how we became friends, and I went on to do loads of other stuff with him as well. It's often thought that the Mellotron is that funny little sound in the middle that goes... Blah, blah, blah. That's actually a stylophone. It, and David it? was on his way to the studios in Wardour Street where we were recording it and they were launching the stylophone in a little shop and he went in and bought one for a quid and came in and he was bet by Tony Visconti that he couldn't get it on the record. And he said, I will, and he got it on. That's the <laughs> bit. That's that the bit where, that's you, got, where you got paid £9 for that session fee. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. That was uh, the, the session rates at the time, yeah, it was £9. Yeah. nine, nine pounds. What was he like to, to work with as, as a musician, to, to actually be with him? He was the most influential person ever for me, ever musically. I worked with him a lot after that. Did other tracks like Wild Eye Boy from Free Cloud and Memory of a Free Festival. Then went on to do the Hunky Dory album with him. And then later on do uh, Absolute Beginners. Mm. Um, which was great fun. And the, um, I, I was his neighbour for four and a half years in Switzerland, fair enough, and we used to meet up a lot and tell silly stories. But he was the most perfect man at, uh, to work in the studio. He was absolutely brilliant. He, he knew just how to do it. I learned a lot from him and his producer, Tony Visconti, uh, probably more than anybody else. But you had the opportunity because, uh, ironically, on the same day um, that you were asked to join Spiders, Spiders from Mars, yeah. um, you were asked to join Yes. Yeah, and you really... went with Yes? Yeah, it was bizarre. It was on the same day. In the morning, I'd been with the Yes guys with, uh, to do a trial rehearsal, and they said, Look, come and join the band. And then in the evening, David had invited me to meet him at Hampstead Country Club with, with Mick Ronson and said, I'm forming a band called Spiders from Mars. Want you to do it with with uh, with Mick? And I said, oh, I've just been asked to join. Yes. Oh, and he wow. said, what, what are you going to do? I said, Well, I have to go away and think about it. It was just a, a really, really genuine, nice guy. He, he he was a doer, not a thinker. He hated could have. People who said, Oh, I could have done that. He hated those. Mm. I mean, if you wanted to know what it was like to walk down Bromley High Street wearing a women's ball gown. He'd do it. <laughs> he actually said to me one day in Switzerland, he said, I'm not sure capitalism is the right answer. I think I'll go, I'll go to East Berlin for a bit. And he went and lived in East yeah. Berlin to try it all out. And I remember when he finally came back some months later, met him in a little club called the Museum Club in Montreux. And I said, well, how was it? They said, well, that doesn't work either. <laughs> but at least he went out and tried it. You know, that well, was the great thing.